<laughs> oh my god. You're gonna that, have fun editing that one. That was amazing. I don't know about you, but when I'm ready to get the news on what's going on in this world and have my life fulfilled by the sheer brilliance of, of leading me in the right direction to go down the right path, I turn to Cardi B. <laughs> I tend to do this. I mean, as far as enlightening human beings, have you heard her speak? I mean, it's just every single word you're, you're hanging on those words because she just delivers it so well. And I just, I'm so looking forward to Ben Shapiro trying to pick apart the princess that has a way with words. <laughs> He's a wordsmith. And her finger, it's on the pulse. It's on the pulse of what's going on in today's society. She's big. She's big. She interviewed Joe Biden before he was president. She knew it was coming. You guys better recognize it. I'm going to be so upset if Ben Shapiro trashes this princess but apparently she's changing her tune which ben better heed the warning he better listen because if she's starting to turn on immigration well ben needs to turn on it too i mean he really needs to start opening his eyes to this <laughs> oh my god i know ben hasn't been paying attention and I mean, if anybody out there should have been, should have been Ben. Ben should be the guy to go, hey guys, immigration is a little out of hand, but no. Now, Cardi B is the one you have to turn to, and now Ben is gonna wake up. He's gonna become work to the way immigration is today under the Biden administration that she supported. But in her inherent wisdom, she's now beginning to open her eyes. That's the true sign of an intelligent human being, smart person is they can start to see their mistakes, even though clearly, at no point while she was a Bidenette, <laughs> did she ever think, this guy might not be good for us. I trusted that, I trusted her, and I still trust her. We, we should all trust in Cardi B. Trust in Cardi B. <laughs> so let's watch as she enlightens Ben Shapiro. Let's do this. Folks, as you know, I'm not the biggest Cardi B fan, mainly because she's stupid and terrible. But she did say something the other day that's only half stupid and terrible. You can see the roiling undercurrents of dissatisfaction with Joe Biden from one of the great luminaries of our time, Cardi B. So she, she put up a post that has gone pretty viral in which she basically threatens Biden. Now, do I think that Cardi B will end up voting for Joe Biden? Of course, because, again, a lot of the people who are very annoyed with Biden right now, they will come home. But is it going to be enough to defeat Donald Trump, who has extremely high levels of enthusiasm among Republicans? Here is what's going on right now inside the electorate. Republicans are very enthused to vote for Donald Trump. Democrats are not very enthused to vote for Joe Biden. So Democrats are counting on Democrats to be enthused to vote against Donald Trump. Maybe that works and maybe that doesn't. The reality is that Hillary Clinton lost in 2016 because she was not able to replicate the levels of enthusiasm, particularly with minority voters, that they had for Barack Obama. That's why she lost. Joe Biden is in very similar danger. That was covered up for in 2020 because of the pandemic. It was covered up for because of the Donald Trump of it and the Black Lives Matter movement and all the rest of it. In 2024, will that be replicated? I don't know. And social media. Here, here is Cardi B. What's, what's hilarious about Cardi B, and this Champions is not the first time like that she's ranted about economics, is that Cardi B, like Got so many elected. people who are of the left, she's True so winners, close to seeing winners. the thing, but she can't see the thing. So here she is railing <laughs> about the fact that New York City is now cutting services. Then she idiotically blames <clears throat> federal spending for that, which of course has nothing to do with it. If she actually understood maybe how economics but works and then New York City has to cut services because the taxes are too high, the regulations are too high, they don't have enough money coming in, and they're spending too much money, maybe she might think differently about government. She doesn't. But she is blaming but Joe Biden for it. Here she was the other she day. She understands money. <laughs> in New York, there is a $120 million budget cut. There's a $120 million budget cut in New York that is going to affect schools, so public libraries, and um the police department. Y'all know I don't give a Cops, but like it is what it is there's gonna be an 120 million dollar budget really? cut with schools with the libraries and the cops and the police department and a five million dollar budget cut in sanitation of a budget cut in sanitation 
I'm gonna be drowning with rats. I'm not endorsing no presidents no more. Cause how is there a hundred hundred million dollar budget cut in New York City for for um schools, library, uh police safety, and sanitation? Yeah, Joe Biden is talking about like yeah, we could fund two wars. We could fund two wars. My talking about we don't got it, but we got it. Like we're the greatest nation. No, the we're not. We're going through some shit like right now. To a poet. I mean, okay, now, she makes I like sense. that she's blaming the federal government for this. I mean, the federal government's to blame for a lot of things. They're not to blame for the fact that New York City has busted its that. budget over I and over and over. By the way, she's wrong about the numbers. The projected gap in terms of budgeting is $5 billion for the next fiscal year in New York City. The New York City budget, by the way, is $100 billion a year. It is the largest annual budget of anywhere in the country. But she's so close to the thing. She's so close to the thing, which is, where is all the money going? Why are you spending all this money? She's never going to get there. But when people are dissatisfied, they're not going to show up for the there. party that they blame for the dissatisfaction. She's, Hard she's to blame Trump it. for all the bad things that are happening in the country. This is your last chance to take advantage of Birch Gold's Black Friday deal. So as Birch we talk Gold. about the economic problems in Argentina and, you know, and the I problems the debasing an like, entire currency, I'm not even going to get the rest soon enough is going to have to be based currency because of the people. exorbitant people amounts of debt that been piled on top of economies take, like that of the United States. We are now approaching $40 trillion in national debt, and we're going to go way beyond that. Right now, when you open wow. a gold IRA for every the 10 grand you spend by December 22nd, Birch Gold will send you a free gold bar. But you have to text Ben to 989898 and claim eligibility before Black Friday. Birch Gold can even help part. you convert an existing I mean, IRA or 401k into an I mean, IRA in gold, just gold just for no so money out of pocket, good. and you still get the free gold bar. Just, just text Ben to 989898 today. You look back when the national debt is greater than our total GDP, you know it's time to diversify away from the U.S. dollar. Birch Gold makes it very convenient to move some of those dollars into physical gold, by the way. If you're an Argentine, you wish you had physical gold right now instead of a peso. With an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied customers, I choose to buy my gold from Birch Gold. You can trust them as well. Text Ben to 989898. Receive a free info kit on gold. Claim your eligibility before Black Friday to receive a free gold with qualifying purchase. That's Ben to 989898. If your sleep quality has been off, as mine has been for the last several weeks, given world events and everything else, the simple fact is you need a great mattress that is personalized to you. This is what Helix Mattress does for me. I took that two-minute sleep quiz, I don't know, eight or ten years ago. They sent me a mattress personalized for me. It is still it. fantastic. Well, now will Helix it. is introducing their newest, most high-end collection, the Helix this Elite. Is what Cardi Helix B Elite Energy harnesses does. years of extensive mattress expertise oh, to offer a truly energy. elevated sleep Listening experience. Her, the Helix Elite collection includes six different mattress models, each Unreal. tailored for specific sleep I mean, positions and firmness preferences. Just Head on over to helixsleep.com slash Ben. Say Check out the new collection today. Him, if you're nervous please. about buying a mattress online, you don't have to be. Helix has a sleep quiz. It matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress. Cardi because why would you buy a mattress made for somebody else? No. Again, I took that Helix sleep quiz. I'm not. gave me a firm but breathable mattress, which is precisely what I needed. Cardi. You should get the mattress that matches please. you. Helix Write is offering 25% on. off all mattress I orders and two free pillows for our listeners in honor of Black Friday. Go to helixsleep.com slash Ben. Use code HELIXPARTNER25. This is their best offer yet. It's not going to last long. With Helix, better sleep can starts that way. right so that now. They've got all if you're a Democrat and you're freaking out about Joe Biden probably losing <laughs> to Trump at this point if the election were held today, well, there's only one thing you can do, and that is you got to go back into the old grab bag of Trumpy issues. And that means Trump is Hitler. Yep, get ready for that thing all the way from now until the election. The New York Times headline well, last night, stopped. quote, Trump's dire words raise new fears about his authoritarian bent. Ooh, ah, are you scared yet? <laughs> and shivering down your spine. Ooh, that's right. <laughs> the, the orange gentleman who is sitting at Mar-a-Lago, tweeting in all caps, that dude, just, to, just he's Hitler. Reminder, he's Hitler. That, that's that's going to be their pitch from now until the election cycle. Donald J. Trump rose to power with political campaigns that largely attacked external what targets, including immigration from predominantly Muslim countries mm -hmm. and from south of the United States-Mexico border. Yeah. But now, in his third presidential bid, some of his most vicious and debasing attacks have been leveled at domestic. I like the ominous tone, Ben. During a Veterans Day speech, Mr. Trump used language that echoed authoritarian leaders who rose to power in Germany and Italy in the 1930s, <laughs> degrading his political adversaries as vermin who need to be rooted out, as opposed to Joe Biden, who literally did a speech in front of Independence Hall, lit up blood red, in which he called his ultra-MAGA opponents traitors to the country, flanked by Marines in the background. Yes, authoritarianism, we're, we're deeply worried about it from Donald Trump. The yeah. threat from outside forces, Trump said, is far less sinister and dangerous and grave than the threat from within. By, by the way, that is ideologically true. Okay, the United States is not an existential danger from China or Russia or Hamas or Hezbollah or Iran. All those horrible 
countries and, and terrorist entities could do terrible things to us. But are they an existential danger? No, it turns out the existential danger to the United States, as always with a great country and a great power, comes from within. But says the New York Times, this inward turn has sounded new alarms among experts. Ah, the experts are ah. here to save Joe Biden. The experts on autocracy are all worried, worried, worried about Mr. Trump's praise for foreign dictators and disdain for democratic ideals. Again, this is the same media that praise. They praise Lula in Brazil. These are the same people who have warm words for Xi in China. I mean, it, 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 it's wild. It's just wild. Scholars, Democrats, and anti-Trump Republicans are asking anew how much Mr. Trump resembles current strong men abroad and how he compares to authoritarian leaders. Of, wait, you mean opponents of Donald Trump are asking whether he's Hitler? No, this is new. Perhaps most urgently, they're wondering whether his rhetorical turn into more fascist sounding territory is just his latest public provocation of the left, an evolution in his beliefs or the dropping of a veil. Ooh. So uh, what exactly are the things that they are worried he is going to do? Quote, his ambitions include using the Justice Department to take vengeance on his political rivals. Um, this is my this happening? is my confused face. Joe Biden is literally <laughs> using the Justice Department to target Donald Trump right now. Like right yeah. now, Donald Trump is about to face yeah. four separate trials going into the next year. Three of them are completely specious. The only one that has any relevance to it, criminally speaking whatsoever, Eesh. is the classified documents case. And Joe Biden also mishandled classified documents. And so did Hillary Clinton. And then bleach bit her, her actual hard drives. So, yeah. So oh, my God. Donald Trump might weaponize the DOJ. Just like Barack Obama and Joe Biden. Uh huh. Are you tired of the lies and the twist of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest Casual series, Fact, ben. where I dismantle and bring Casual truth to the tiring mainstream agenda. You don't see that often. It yeah. Would, it would be exhausting to be friends with Ben Shapiro. It really would. It's like, oh my God. Like it would be I'd be like, stop! Take stop, a breath. Man. Take a breath. Take a deep breath. Now continue. Slower. 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 <laughs> The, the reality is, crazy people always accuse other people of doing exactly what they are doing. So if you haven't figured out that the Biden administration is crazy at this crazy. point, and the media is insane, then I don't know what to tell you. If you still buy anything the media tells you at this point, I'm, I'm sorry to hear it. I'm not. No, y'all doing it to y'all selves at this point. I don't care anymore. The thing is, the greatest ratings since the internet for media, because they lost a lot of their, their revenue not being able to sell papers and magazines and things of that nature. They had to start going into quick bait and mm -hmm. advertising that way. The greatest thing that ever happened to them since those days was Donald Trump. And yeah. you know this because they never shut up about Donald Trump. Nope. And the NPCs out there feed off of it like it's food. They the eat NPC. It. <laughs> they just, ooh, more Trump. What did Trump do? What talking points can I use at work when someone brings up what headline? Donald Trump? But that's the greatest thing that ever happened to the media. So they're not going to let it go. Nope. And I want to say Bill Burr made the comment here recently. Everybody's like, ooh, Bill told off, you know, Jimmy Kimmel for calling him a liberal. Well, yeah. He yeah. Does quack. I mean, come on now. The guy's got, when, when COVID hit, you just thought that dude ran the FDA. The media is so insane at this point that they're always going to turn to Donald Trump. The, the liberals are always going to use him as a person. Somebody's got to make you scared of change. And if you do change from their completely rational totally. theories of what gender is and super normal, the way sports should be handled and how we need to present our, our movie product through one of the greatest kids networks ever, ever created, the greatest. The way we need to now align it and show it to children. I mean, if you don't see these people are crazy by now, I don't know what else to tell you. I just don't. There's nothing else you can tell them. At and this people point. will argue till they're blue in the face. And then when you call them back on their points, they're just going to name call you and disappear. Yep. That's how it is. So in order to distract you, they bring up Donald Trump. Well, all they do is make him more and more popular. Exactly. I mean, they're not doing him any harm by doing this. Even bad publicity is still publicity. 
And I mean, when you see the, the, the light shine on the current administration and just the absolute insanity of- Absolute insanity. The best person most qualified for the job has to be male, female, black, white, Asian, whatever. The template is already there and it's not the best person for the job. It's this job needs a, needs a gay, bisexual, little person, black, whatever one. and that's the only person that can fill this position and that's literally what this administration has started to do and with these different scores the DVI and all this other crap it's gotten to the point where it's just comical and the yeah. media just does everything they can to defend it anybody with a brain can see that no our economy is not as good as it was under Donald Trump no, no our gas prices are not as good as they were under Donald Trump my paycheck doesn't look as good as it did under Donald Trump. Nothing, Nothing is as good as it was under Donald Trump. And if you can't see that by now, almost four years into a Biden administration, <laughs> well, we're about to go into the fourth year, so enjoy. The fourth year is going to be the absolute worst, people. This is what 81 million people, 81 million people voted for. So that's what you've done to us, our country, all because you want to stigmatize Donald Trump as the person who's you're scared of doing exactly what the current administration is doing. When it takes a brilliant genius like Cardi B to point this out to you, I'm sorry, but if you don't believe Cardi B, for real? Like the fact that she she's a genius. I wasn't going to go that far. Kanye got nothing, nothing. And okay. Kanye got called crazy. Yeah. People hating on Kanye, too, because he's another genius. Kanye can be in his own sense, okay? That's he's not a musical now, genius, and when it comes to politics... Yeah, I mean, he's a little nutty, I'll really? give him that. But, I mean, he's not wrong half the time. We can take our pencil hats and throw them in the trash, because at this point, there's no such thing as conspiracy theories. Alex Jones is back on Twitter happened today. Yeah. And I think my question is, what happens when Donald Trump dies? Is it Elon? Is that who the media is? They're going to have to be obsessed with somebody. No, the they're still going to be obsessed with Donald Trump. Well, he'd be dead, though. And that, they no, don't care. I mean, what they going to do? Just report, you know, hey, it's been day 32 since Donald Trump passed away, and we're just reminding you that he still died. Let's take a look at his history and what we said about him. She's not wrong, though. If you listen to what's... A broken How clock you can hear... He's right twice a day. But she's not wrong. She's fine. Like Ben says, she's starting to see it. She's not there completely yet, but she's there. She's right at the edge of it. Party's always been there. Have you heard WAP? Really? I mean, just, she's there. She needs to be there with Jordan Peterson. I put her up in that category. Alex Jones, Jordan Peterson. Try to be serious here. <laughs> she's there. God willing, before the election hits, I'm hoping at least a month before, if not sooner, but we can only hope that T-Sizzle will do this for us. But we need her endorsement on who I need to vote for. Because being the person of the year tells me that is the person that we need to listen to when it comes to okay, how our you. country needs to unfold. No, we see her enough on NFL, she needs to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's- I'm sick of it, I'm sick of the Swifties. They feminized everything. But she sells out stadiums and she's on a bigger screen than everybody. Else. I don't so, care. I mean, the bigger the screen, the more intelligent the person. I mean, that hasn't that haven't movies taught us that? I mean, come on, Mark Ruffalo? I mean the bigger he's the Hulk. You don't get any bigger than the Hulk. Oh my God. He's the Hulk. So he's big on the screen. So he's obviously the most intelligent Bro. when it comes to listening to political opinion. Mark Ruffalo. He's a philanthropist. He's a humanitarian. He is what we all need. Oh, I'm so done. <laughs> Get in the comments. Let us know what you think. Comments. Mark Ruffalo, Cardi B. Am I am I not right about this? I mean, <laughs> I mean, Robert De Niro was in like every good movie in the 80s. Come on. Raging Bull. He can go. So can Cher and everybody else who's threatening to leave. But they ain't going to. You know why? Money. Because they're going to get that money back. He's on the big screen. And big screen means you're smarter than everybody else and you should absolutely listen to what they have to say. It's just that simple. Guy. I mean, if Matthew McConaughey is going to one day run this country, you mark my word. That I can actually see. <laughs>
Yeah, he's <laughs> on the big everybody else. President Ruffalo, Vice President McConaughey, coming to you soon to live the enlightenment. And Cardi B will be our Secretary of Treasury because she knows how to manage money. Like, share, Just subscribe, do the thing. Do it. Just, just do it. Until the next time, guys. Come at me, bro. You pulled a 100% mat wall. <laughs> it took everything in me not to stop laughing at the 100%. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Hashtag new mat wash. Uh, yeah. <sighs> okay. He is my spirit animal. <laughs>